Hello, everybody. Welcome to Klaus to the Heart Live on ONTV. We certainly appreciate you tuning in tonight to, to join us here. And we have a very special guest, a guy that I am very excited about having on the show. We've, we've been talking about doing this for, for, for quite some time. We have finally made it happen. Please welcome my friend Q, as it were, one, <laughs> one of our great guys here. Uh, Claudel Ed Edwards, I certainly appreciate you coming on the show today. Thank you for having me. I appreciate it. appreciate being here. Yeah, it, we, we, we've been talking about doing this for a while. Yes. Um, you know, Q and I, we met because we work in the same place. And um, by chance, you know, when you're dealing with a plant that has thousands of people in it, right. you know, it is by, by chance that you come across somebody that really, re you know, will resonate with you. And Q is one of those guys. Um, you know, for me, Q, you know, we hit it off because, well, number one, we, we work in the same place, right? And, and then we found out that we're both fans of professional wrestling. Absolutely. And anybody that knows anything about, about me knows what a huge thing that, that is with me. If, if you want to talk wrestling, you have my attention, <laughs> right? Um, but I got to know you more on a personal level through, you know, it's been a couple of years now that, that you and I have, have known each other. And the one thing that really stands out to me when, when I think about you is you are one of the most positive and upbeat people that I have ever met. And that, that really resonates with how you carry yourself as a, as a, as a person, because I pay close attention to stuff like that. You know <laughs> what I mean? There's, um, I, I make a conscious effort, and I'm sure a lot of you do too, of what kind of people you want to uh, associate yourselves with. You know, by and large, you want to be around people that are, you know, they bring you some sort of joy. They bring right. you, you know, there is a light with them. You, yes. You, because you don't want to deal with drama. You don't want to deal with all of the neg neg negativity as it were, um, but at the same time, man, that's what makes people like you shine. And I wanted you to come on here tonight because, you know, we're all about that here on, on this show, is just spread positivity, to look at the brighter side of life, and you are an example of that. So kind of take me through, Q, um, your, your, you know, how you grew up, where you're from, what brought you to GM, all, all of that stuff. Well, my, my story is a little, it's a little complicated. Um, I grew up in Pontiac, Michigan. Okay. Pontiac, Michigan. Right down uh, the road from right, here. Right down the road. Uh, I grew up to a, a, a single parent home. Um, you know, my father, he was never, never in my life. Um, I never met him. Uh, you know, and uh, as I was growing up, you know, my mom, she, she taught me certain values about forgiving people. So, you know, early, Early on as a child, I was able to forgive my father for not being there. And uh, she kind of she kind of uh, helped me out with different values in life. Uh, my mom, she was very spiritual. She was uh, she grew up in we, we grew up in a church, a church in Pontiac. And uh, she she uh, we didn't have a lot of money. It, it, it's we didn't have a lot of money. So we had to really take life for what it was at the time and we really had to make decisions best on you know us within that situation you know um, we lived with my grandmother uh, for a while it was just me and her and my grandmother and I do have two older siblings who are uh, a lot older than I am my brother he's 12 years older than I am and my sister is six years older than I am so they moved out <laughs> so it, it, was, it was almost as if i was an only child so i had a real close uh relationship with my mother so she uh gave me a lot of tools pretty much for life at a young age and uh you know as i grew up i just start to rely on those values especially especially like when i got into my teenage years um when i got into my teenage years uh my mother who who pretty much worked really hard just to provide for for me and for my siblings when they were in the house. Um, but when she provided, uh, there would be times where I didn't really get to see her much, but the values that she put in me uh, really kind of helped 
me to become a little bit more independent, mm -hmm. you know? Uh, so as I got into my teenage years, when uh, things started getting a little rocky, um, she, she took ill. She took ill and um, she ended up passing away as I was, I was 17 when she passed away. Wow. And uh, the values that she put in me, and I, and, and I always credit my mom for how I am now. Because one thing I always tell people is decisions, your choices shape your life. Absolutely. <laughs> and that's, you know, as you're laying all of this out, I, I can, number one, I can see the, the emotion in your face when you're talking about, about your mom. So I can really appreciate that. Um, what strikes me here, Q, is you, at an, at an early age, you are presented with challenges, yes. right? You know, almost right out of the gate. And, yes, and like yes. you had said, your, your siblings had moved out, so you were more or less like an only child. Now, I mean, at this point, do you have a, a relationship with your brother and, and your sister now that you're an adult? And oh, absolutely. Okay. Yes, yes. We're, we're, we're pretty close. Okay. Um, we don't get to see each other as often due to our career paths, but uh, we are a pretty close-knit group, especially after, uh, you know, my mom passed. And it, it seemed like it brought us closer together. Sure. Um, and, you know, the fact that all three of us had children actually helped a lot because you know we, we we let the cousins pretty much play with each other which is very important yes yes you know, uh, your cousins you know by and large are among your your best friends i mean i know my cousins i i think the world of right yes, so yes. i i can appreciate that and i can also uh, appreciate the fact that it took the tragedy of losing your mom to kind of put life in, in perspective right yes. i mean i mean yep. i i can relate to that because you know, with us, when we lost my mom, it brought my dad and my brother and I very close together because, you know, it took something of that magnitude to really put life in, in perspective. Mm -hmm. What's really important here and that, in fact, we are on borrowed time. Yes. You know, yep. um, now since then losing Jeff has brought my dad and I even that much closer together. Yeah. You know, yeah. so I can totally appreciate that. Um, but back to your story here, at s such a young age and coming into your teenage years, which, you know, w make no mistake about it, that is the, some of the most impressionable time of your life, yes, right? absolutely. You could have gone one or two ways. It was, yeah. it, you you could have went down a path that was not very good and did yep. not lead to anything positive in your life, or you, which you did, you went the other way. You you took those those lessons from your mother and they they meant something to you. Yes, yes. You carry them t to this day. I mean, you. I see that, and, and and anybody who knows you sees that is a direct reflection of what kind of influence that that she had. Yes. And I think that's very cool. I, oh, absolutely. I really do. I know. Um, it wasn't always on that straight and narrow path because I know shortly after she did pass, um, I did take a wrong turn. Okay. I did take a wrong turn for for a period I dealt with uh, alcohol issues, and that was uh, real, re I mean, real deep in my life, um, dealing with that, going all the way into my 20s, you know, dealing with alcohol. But uh, one thing about going down that wrong path is I found that first exit. <laughs> I found that exit, and I, 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 my journey is... It, it, it was all over the place because I ended up moving down to Kansas City. Okay. I ended up moving down to Kansas City thinking that, you know, my problems would be resolved if I just get away. Sure. But one thing, is, and, and you know, when you become an adult, you start to learn about certain things. And I, I tell people now, uh, sometimes when you have a problem, it's not about leaving because if the problem is in you, you're taking a problem with you. Yep. <laughs> so... I left. I went down to Kansas City and I took the problem with me. I took the problem with me. I was still dealing with alcohol issues and uh, all these other crazy thoughts and everything. And uh, But one thing that really kept me is, uh, you know, being such a visionary, uh, being having the imagination that's just just that was just built as a child, you know, um, and, and the, the values that my mom put in me. 
and that, that, that helped me. I, I went and got a journal. I started to write and document everything. I wrote down good and I wrote down bad. And, uh, and right there in Kansas, I, I, I seen the weight just started to lift off. It was a slow process. And, uh, and just that's what I tell people, it's going to be a slow process, but the weight slowly lifted off. What was it about, about Kansas? You know what? I get asked that question a lot. <laughs> Kansas was a random <laughs> selection. Well, you me. just like throw a dart <laughs> at, at the dartboard. Okay, we're going to go here. <laughs> I did. Have, I had a roommate, and uh, you, might, you might know him, Anthony McCoy. Yeah. yeah. Uh, he was a roommate of mine, and uh, he ended up going down there with me. So we went down to Kansas City together, Overland Park, right outside of Kansas City. And, uh, you know, we, we embarked on that journey together, you know, and uh, sometimes it's good to have a shoulder to lean on because he helped me a lot. I helped him a lot. So, sure. uh, you know, just having somebody to uh, kind of help lift that weight off of you because it, it, you, you can't do it by yourself. I didn't realize you <laughs> knew Anthony like that. I, he used to work across the line from me yep. <laughs> uh, when we were in, in the old trim shop. Yeah, and uh, he, childhood friend is he? Yes, I did not know that. Yes, he's a childhood he's, friend. He was he was always uh, he was very much a highlight of, <laughs> of the day. Very much into the Macho Man Randy Savage. Oh yeah, he's, and he would try this thing where he would try to outfox me. You know, like, I found a piece of footage of Savage that you've never seen before, and I'm like, oh yeah, show it to me. And then he would, I mean, two seconds in, I'm like, oh, this is where he worked this this guy at this event. Mm -hmm. He wore this color. You know what I mean? So you're, you're not going to oh, get yeah. one over on me, right? Um, that's very cool. I, I did not realize that. He's very entertaining. Um, so, man, oh man, you, you made a tremendous point here is that when it is an internal problem, you're not going to leave it. No. You, I mean, you may in, initially in your mind, you may think, you know, I'm going to run away from this. I'm going to run so fast that it will never catch up. If it's in you, it's in you. It's in you. It's coming back out yep. in one way or another. That's just, that, that's just the way it is. Yep. We have to be honest with ourselves, right? Yep. Now, exactly. the whole journal thing. I have mentioned that to other people that I've talked to. Yes. That have, you know, I'm having a problem. I have all this weight on, on my shoulders, very much what you're laying out. And I've told them exactly the same thing. Go get a journal. Yes. Go get a piece of paper. And, but if you're, if you're going to go that, that route with it, you got to be 100% honest with yourself. Because yeah. if you're not honest in your own journal, what are you doing? Exactly. Because eventually... There, there is that old saying, the truth shall set you free. Mm -hmm. That does, I mean, that's not cliche. That does, that does resonate. Yes. That does mean something, yep. right? Yep. Um, so you're in Kansas City and, you know, you're starting to realize that this thing is starting, you know, it's with you, you know, however many miles away from, from Kansas to Pontiac, uh, but it's still there. Still there. And you're getting, you, you've got your journal, you're writing in, in, in your journal, you're being honest with yourself, I would imagine. Yes. At what point do you make the return back to, to Michigan? <laughs> it's a funny story with uh, my return back to Michigan. It has, actually has something to do with GM. Okay. <laughs> uh, my GM story, uh, you know, I received a couple of calls from uh, GM back in 2000. In 11. Now, I, I initially did the training course before the bankruptcy, so that was back in 07. Right. But, uh, you know, after the bankruptcy, I just pretty much gave up on that hope, and um, I ended up leaving. But uh, when they called me in 2011, they told me to, uh, you know, we would like to do the drug tests. Can you be in Lake Orion? <laughs> oh, wow. In the morning. Oh, wow. <laughs> I was going to say, I knew this. There's not a lot of time, right? Not if, a lot of time. If, if you want it, now's the time. Yep, not yep. a lot of time. And uh, it's, it's crazy because I always say, you know, God works in miraculous ways, in mysterious ways. And uh, I actually turned them down. Oh, wow. So not a lot of people say can say that they turned down GM and actually worked for GM. So I turned down GM three times. Three times they did not give me enough time to actually get there. So 
when they called me that fourth time, and this is where I knew I had some favor on my life. Uh, they, they, they called me that fourth time and they told me, you know, we'll give you four days, four days. I went down to <laughs> downtown Kansas City, Missouri, on the Missouri side. Um, and uh, I got a bus, not a bus ticket, but a, a train ticket, round trip. <laughs> and this is where my story gets real interesting. <laughs> I'm, I'm on the edge of my seat over here, pal. <laughs> now, I took the train. This is a Friday. I got to Michigan on a Friday. Didn't have nowhere to stay. My sister, she, uh, she, lived, she lived in um, Auburn Hills. Okay. She lived in Auburn Hills, so she let me stay there for a little bit with her. And uh, I uh, went and did the drug test that Friday. Went and did the drug test. And, you know, I got, I got a job in Kansas City. I got a job in Kansas City, and um, I'm already prepared to go back to that job on Monday. Okay. So after I did the drug test, I knew I was clean. I don't do drugs or anything like that. So I, I knew I was clean. So they called me that afternoon, Friday, and said, are you ready to start on Monday? Huh. So now I'm in a pickle. Right. <laughs> I'm in a bit of a pickle. I got this round trip ticket going back to Kansas. And uh <laughs> and um my train leaves Monday morning, six AM. Six AM. And this is where it, it gets crazy. Um my train leaves at six AM. So what I did, I told GM I, there's no way I can come. Because, you know, I didn't think it was going to be this soon. I didn't think you guys were going to bring me in for orientation this soon. So I actually turned them down. After, Again. After you did the drug <laughs> test and all yep, that. after the, the drug test. They said, you have the job. Can you start on this day? Yep. That Monday. I turned them down again. Okay. So. <laughs> <laughs> this does not happen. I can tell you that. <laughs> so, uh, and I hope GM is listening. <laughs> um, and uh, I remember Sunday night. Sunday night, I got really hammered. I got really drunk. And uh, it, was, uh, it was me and my cousin. I'm not going to say his name. But if he's watching, he know who he is. Um, we had a big night on the town, Detroit. Okay. <laughs> and um, it was time for me to go back onto the train. You know, it was, it was uh, getting close to 6 a.m. We're running late. We're going down the highway. And um, I get to the train station five minutes after the train takes off. <laughs> hmm. So I miss my train. I miss my train. And um, <laughs> I called GM. I said, is that offer still on the table? They told me to come in Tuesday. Unbelievable. They told me to come in Tuesday. I came in Tuesday for the orientation. They had to handwrite my name back on the list. <laughs> Brother, that doesn't happen. You know what I mean? Usually, in, I, I'm sure there's a thousand other stories that are not on the, the norm because when, when I went through the process, it was now or never. Yeah. You, you either take this job now or we're going to pass you by because <laughs> there's a talent pool of thousands of applicants that are right. just waiting for the call. You're getting multiple, multiple <laughs> shots at this thing. That is un. So obviously, in your mind, are you, are you, do you believe that this, this is the route that you're supposed to go? And even though you, kind of question it and you're kind of thinking about the Kansas City thing <laughs> right it's I mean it, it is apparent to me that this is where you're supposed to be because exactly this does not happen and you know and there's actually more to that story I, I can't. <laughs> <laughs> you know um I started at the Lake Orion plant okay that Tuesday you know I did the orientation and um when I got onto the floor and started working I actually met a young lady there <laughs> she was working for one of the uh, 
uh, the LOC or you know one of the the companies that worked with GM. Uh, the she wasn't working. Company. Yeah, the contractor yep. company. Um, she was working there, and um, we we talked and we joked, and she was in an abusive relationship, a mentally abusive relationship. So uh, I used to always joke with her because she was always telling me what was going on, and uh, I would always joke with her. I said, "I'm going to rescue you from that." situation you're in and you know I, I, I was just being friendly you know sure. I was just <laughs> I was being friendly <laughs> and uh and um you know you know after so long you know we actually hit it off uh pretty good and uh you know lo, long and behold you know nine years later wow. <laughs> you know she's she's my wife she we've been married for all for it'll be nine years in October and you guys have five, five kids? Five kids. So, man, oh man, that wouldn't have happened had you made that train. Exactly. Do you, do you sit there so, sometimes and, and, and wonder, kind of like a sliding doors type of concept. I talked about this on my podcast with Nikki Falsoni, and we did an, an entire episode of the sliding doors concept. You know, you what if, you went down this road versus th this road. <laughs> Brother, if you had gone to Kansas City on that on that that one day and you made that train mm. and you told GM I'm not coming, you would not be where you are in life with That's your right. wife, with your children, who I've got to believe are your absolute world, right? Absolutely. So it just blows my mind. Look, I knew we were going to we were going to have a good show tonight, <laughs> but I had no idea it was going to be on this level. I am blown away right now. <laughs> this is so fantastic. This is good stuff, pal. Yeah, you know, uh, <laughs> it's it's crazy how you know things work out because uh, I I don't like to uh, leave a job or a situation someone that I'm you know already dedicated to. I'm dedicated to that job already, and. Right. Uh, one thing I didn't want to do is I didn't just want to up and leave right. because I had to let them know that I got a fam I got a family emergency. I got to go to Michigan, mm -hmm. you know, so I'm, that's what I told them. Mm -hmm. And um, I told them I'll be back Monday. So in the back of my mind, I'm thinking about how I'm doing this other company. And, uh, you know, I was in a pretty I was in like a supervisor um, position in that in, in that company. So it was it was a big deal to me. Sure. And I, I felt bad, you know, I felt bad, but, you know, it's like I said, God works in mysterious ways. So I, I, I believe that this is the path that I'm supposed to take. And even within that journey, within that time frame, I was being healed from all the, uh, um, you know, hurt that I had from my mother passing away and, uh, you know, all the hurt from all that. And, you know, the drinking started to, it faded, it faded away and, you know. You kind of have like a renewed <laughs> purpose in life. Yeah. Sort of. Yeah. And I probably wouldn't have been healed if I was still in a situation in Kansas. So that's why I, I kind of see it as a as, as a, a, a double edged sword. You know, <laughs> you know, it really helped me out. That is fantastic. That is, you know, man, this is one of of the coolest stories I've I've ever had on on the show here because it is the epitome of everything that we talk about either here on the podcast on YouTube fantastic stuff um, it, what we're gonna do we are going to take a, a quick break here um, on ON TV when we come back I want to talk about your fanfare with professional wrestling Absolutely. I want to talk about how the motivational speaking became a thing and uh, kind of go down that route. So, yes. so, so stick around. More of the Klaus the Heart Live on ON TV is right after this timeout. ON TV invites filmmakers of all ages to take part in the annual Wildwood Film Festival. Kickoff is on Thursday, October 7th at 6 p.m. Filmmakers have five days to plan, shoot, and edit a short film that will be critiqued by a panel of judges and shown on the big screen at the Oxford 7th Theater on October 13th. Cost is $50 per team. 
which goes toward prize money and a portion of which will benefit Lake Orion High School's SOS program. For more information, give ONTV a call at 248-393-1060 or visit orionontv.org today. ONTV encourages you to go back to school and attend our 10-week video production workshop. Classes meet on Monday nights from 7 p.m. to 9 p.m. and offer instruction on studio production, field production, and nonlinear editing. The cost is $55 per person, and upon completion of the class, you get access to ONTV's facilities and equipment to produce your own program or short film. For more information, give ONTV a call at 248-393-1060 or visit orionontv.org today. Welcome back to Klaus to the Heart Live on ONTV. I'm Jason Klaus. I'm with Q, Quadell Edwards. And uh, man, oh man, Q, like we were talking during the break here. Like I had, I've always had a level of respect for you. But after hearing your story and getting really into the weeds, so, so, so to speak, my level of respect for you is just <laughs> blown off the charts here. Like, I'm just so in awe of your story, how you've laid it out, and I'm sure there's a lot more more detail that we could go into, especially with your battles with, with, with alcohol and things of that nature. But right before we went to break, you, you laid this thing out about how you were – essentially at a crossroads in life you could have gone one way which would have taken you back to kansas city yep. and you know that's one aspect of your life or you could go this other route which brought you to your career with gm and which in turn would set you on a path that would eventually have you meet your wife that yes. you were going to rescue her and <laughs> listen brother i when you said that like I got this fe this feeling inside because I can totally understand where you're coming from. Yes. Um. So before we go into not like the lighter side of of your story because I mean your story is nothing short of a success you know s story. Um. Kind of tell me about about your wife because you don't really we don't really talk about her at at work. You, you, right. You know yeah. what I mean. So she must be something pretty special, right? <laughs> she is. She is. Uh, you think I laugh a lot? She's. Uh, <laughs> we actually just talked about it. She's. Uh, she's very, very, very giddy. You know. Um, she's. Her, her. Her heart is so good. You know. She wants to give. She's always giving, and um, to the point where you know I gotta tell her. You know. What about you? You gotta. I guess you're using me to take care of you, but you're taking care of everybody else. So you gotta really make sure that you don't become a doormat, you know? Mm -hmm. And I always tell her like, uh, make sure that people that you're given to are receptive, you know, because some people will just keep coming back <laughs> for the same thing. Sure. You know, so, um, but she's, she's, she's a loving person. She's a, she's a stay at home wife now. Okay. I allowed her, to, I told her to go ahead and be a stay at home wife. You know, we got a lot of kids. Um, she, uh, does a lot of community work now. She does a lot of community work. Um, which I'm sure is pretty important to her, yes. right? Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Um, we, um, pretty much do a lot of work. We're, uh, we're attending Zion Refuge Church and we do a lot of work there and, uh, we do a lot of work for the community in Pontiac. Um, you know, she, she, she's real hands on. <laughs> she's real hands on. Sometimes I got to slow her down. Sure. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's cool, though. I mean, especially because, you know, I know a lot of parents that are stay-at-home parents. Yeah. You know, and all of, the, all of the responsibilities, all of the running around, you know, sports and all kinds of different things that, that are included in that. But, you know, at the end of the day, they're run down. You know, right. that, yeah. that, that is not an easy job for anybody. I don't care no, if it's not. one kid or, in your case, five, right? Right. But... So I have a, a great deal of respect for, for people that are able to maintain that and are su successful at that because if you have happy, healthy kids that are prospering, you're obviously doing something right, right? Yes. Because yes. you're not sitting them down in front of a computer screen or a TV and, right. and let yeah. them be the babysitter. you got to be very hands-on with yep. them. So yeah, I, and I, that I, she is. 
and then to do the community work all you know on top of that it's very admirable yes but yes. you know that kind of that kind of sums you up in a way because you are a go 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 guy you know we work <laughs> You know, we're at work all the time, six days a week, yep. eight, sometimes nine hours, what, whatever the case may be. You know, we're at work all the time. <laughs> you know, and that takes a toll, that, yes. you know, a mental toll, a physical toll, because make no mistake about it, regardless of what the public may think we do, because there is a misconception yep. that us as employees of a, a big three company, that we're lazy. All we do is sit in cushy chairs and right. push buttons. That could not be further from the truth. No way. Um, it, it, it just it just couldn't be, uh, because we walk out of there, man. Our hands are sore. Our joints are aching. Yep. You know, it takes a physical toll. And you know, you've seen how many people come and go. Oh yeah. That oh, I I've got this job, and then they don't last a week. No way. You know, because it is a lot more 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 tolling on our all beings as yeah. uh, you know more than what what people think right um but man you are one of those guys that you 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 work your shift you're taking your care of the kids you're very hands-on with your kids i've yep. seen your posts and things of this but i mean you're all the time working out and you are you know this is where i really started to pay attention because every once in a while you would throw a post up on like facebook and it was a positive message. Right, and right. In in a landscape where there is, you know, so much negative posts and yep. memes and things <laughs> of this nature, Q comes on and I swear to God, brother, it's like a beacon of light. It's like, wow, this is a guy that that has a basic understanding of what is truly important in life. Right. Because with any major situation, may, you know, maybe it's just me. There is a silver lining to just about every possible scenario. Sometimes you got to look for it a little bit deeper, right? right? It's yep. not going to be right on on the top layer. You got to look for it. Right, right, um, right. This in turn has kind of sparked your your delving into motivational speaking. And that's something that I'm very I I have a lot of appreciation for. That's what this whole brand started out as you know, right like, yeah because i was like you i would see stuff on on social media and i'm like man we don't have to be so negative all the time right what if yeah. we thought about this what if you did that go out and buy somebody a cup of coffee or just pay somebody a compliment right yeah brighten yep. somebody's day because man oh man if you want negativity <laughs> there's other it's platforms it is it's all over it's become dominant yeah yeah and you are one of those people that really inspire a positive force. Yes. And I think that's what draw, you know, you and I so so close together. That and, and professional wrestling. Yes. Whoa, we'll, we'll get there in a minute. <laughs> but um, t talk me through this, man. I mean, you is it because of your challenges and the fact that you are a success story? Do you realize that in, at this point in, in your life, what you've done and how that is um, a beacon of positivity for, for people. Yes, yeah, you know, I, I kind of see it as a mixture of, uh, you know, different things. You know, uh, for me, you brought up social media and um, that's one, one thing about social media is I noticed that we're in an age where we are more connected than ever. Absolutely. We're more connected than ever, but we're also in an age that there's more people that are dealing with loneliness. There are more people are dealing with separation and depression. And uh, a lot of the things that we see on social media, I mean, you can put a picture on social media and that can just be just a shell of what's really going on on the inside. So, mm -hmm. and, and we see that with a lot of people because you'll have a, 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 a bright picture one day and then the next day we're talking about, oh, well, we need to go fund me for this person. Mm -hmm. So it's a, uh, to me, it's very important that, you know, you not only seek out what's positive in your life, because it's all about being content. You know, you have to be content with your situation. And if you are, if you are discontent, then that means there's something that you got to do to get out of it. Because a lot of people just sit there and they, and they begin to rot in their situations and, uh, 
it's all about having knowledge. And uh, one thing about me is I read all the time. Mm -hmm. I'm a big time reader. Um, a little bit about how I kind of got to how I am is everything for me is scheduled. Everything for me is scheduled. I had a young lady at work. She uh, came up to me and she asked me, she said, how do you do it? I see you on Facebook, you're working out, you know, you're putting up these good posts and then you come to work and you're all energized and everything. And uh, like, I, how do I, how do I get like that? How do, where do you, when do you sleep? I, t I told her just simply, you know, like this, I still, I still write in my journal to this day. Okay. To this day. It's on my phone now, <laughs> but I still put down everything to this day. And uh, I put everything on a schedule. My whole life, day by day, I schedule everything. I go to sleep at this time. I wake up at this time. I work out at this time. And I encourage somebody at this time. I even have times where, you know, people call me and they want encouragement. And, you know, sometimes you just got to step out of your box sometimes just to help somebody. And, um, you know, that's where I'm at in life is, I always tell people, if you have a dream and you're the only one in it, then that's not really a dream. It's not really a dream. Your dream should always be connected to somebody else. Because it's always, it's about relationships. We should all be, you know, this is my brother. We're, you know, this is my brother, you know, and we got to be connected in a way where if he's bleeding next to me, I should know it. If I'm bleeding next to you, you should know it. We should be able to uplift one another and really <laughs> help people because, you know, I know the path that I went down, the negative path that I went down, and I got out of it. So what can I do to help somebody to not even go down that path, you know? And um, I find that very important because the way that this generation is now, it's not getting better. It's getting worse. Right. It's getting worse. And social media is doing nothing but exposing what's really going on in people's lives. Mm -hmm. So I think it's important that we can be able to encourage someone. So, uh, you know, when I started doing, you know, speaking and everything, uh, <laughs> that was not my thing. I, I, I've never been a talker. I've always been a behind the scenes guy and um i actually told this to my pastor i always been a behind the scenes guy and he was the one who actually pushed me he he pushed me and um uh, i actually went and got licensed as a minister wow i got licensed as a minister and i start you know speaking at you know the church that i go to and i start speaking at different venues and and even uh you know personally people call me over just just to talk you know because people just need to hear another voice that's not theirs, you know? Or not part of their situation. Exactly, yeah. yeah. So, so it's important that we can be that, that, that shining light because it's different than right. what they're used to at the time, so. And I think that's what really resonates with, you know, of you is because you do make yourself known that you are a safe person to talk to yes. like you know anybody that 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 goes up to talk to you knows whatever they tell you it goes no further like they're you oh yeah <laughs> you, you display yep. a sense of trust and that's one of the things that I picked up the one of the first times that I really sat and talked to you you know because we we when we met we were making the transition to the new trim shop yes and there was People were being moved from shift to shift, so we didn't have a whole lot of time, you know, initially. But once we got on on the same shift and we stayed on the same shift, well, I did anyway, right? Because <laughs> it was my seniority in question here, but that's <laughs> neither here nor there. But um, that's one of the things that I really picked up on is because you're not you're not somebody that has a larger than life boisterous ego. But right, he, yeah. but you, but the way you present yourself is on the contrary, Be, which which just just it goes to show 
you don't have to be the loudest to make the, the biggest impact. Right, right. You, because you know a lot of people, I'm sure, because I know I do too, they will talk just for the sake of hearing themselves talk. Yes, yes. And even though the volume is amplified, <laughs> the actual meaning of what they're saying is empty. Right, right, right. You are not like that. You are the exact opposite of that, actually. <laughs> you, you, I'm just in awe of you, Q, and I'm trying to find the right words here because uh, I'm, I'm just, I, I'm so appreciative of you, and I know that you have helped people that I know, that we work with, that I care about, even if you're just there to be an ear for them to vent to. Right, right. Um, one in particular, <laughs> you know, um, mm -hmm. and I'm not going to name names on here. You know, if she watches and she knows who who she is. Yes. But I I know that you have been a um, a beacon of of hope for the lack of a better term, and I think that that's fantastic, and that tells me a number of things. One, your mother was an incredible woman because yes, those those values those teachings obviously resonated with you to the point that that's something that is a part of your core that's yes. number one number two you are the success story to where you could have went down the wrong path and lord knows where you would have wound up you wouldn't be where you are now. That's right. Yeah. You, you wouldn't be with your lovely wife, your five awesome kids, and you wouldn't be here on ON TV, right? Right, that's right. <laughs> <laughs> um, so I just think that that is so fantastic, and, and I applaud you for all, you. Of, all of the positive things that you have brought to people's lives, ones that you know, and I'm quite sure there's you know many, many more that you don't know about. But something that you said, some time that, that you spent with them has resonated with them and has helped them through some pretty dark and daunting times. Right, right. Especially, you know, in this day and age, my goodness gracious, you know, with us, with with our with our work environment, right. it's a completely other animal than anybody can ever comprehend. Oh, yeah. Right? Oh, yeah. It is something totally extraordinary it's plant just, life right? yeah I, but i mean there's plant life and then there's where we work right right you know because yeah. where we work by and large is its own animal <laughs> i mean it stands out on its own yes it does you know even though it's uh, it's it's owned by this company the way we do things is not the way any other plant or fa or facility does their thing it just isn't you know, maybe I'm a little right. biased, but <laughs> it is what it is. I love it, though. Isn't it right? <laughs> Isn't it, maybe we are yep. in a good spot. We're in a good you spot. <laughs> uh, for our, all the all the complaining that we could do by at the end of the day. It gets you nowhere. Nope. It's not going to change anything. <laughs> nope. You yes. know. Um, you be complain free, you know. That's so awesome. So, um, I, w I want to... I and th this was another reason why I wanted you on here because we have a a shared fandom for yes, professional wrestling. Yes, we do. And um, you know, the, I, this show I tried to have a little bit of something for everybody because I know that there are Michigan wrestling organization fans that tune in to watch th this show, and which I which I certainly appreciate. And here's 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 my cheap plug. <laughs> <laughs> uh, MWO will be back on ONTV on October 9th for 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 Trick or Slam, so that's going to be very right. cool. So, <laughs> fear not, wrestling fans. We are we are going to have we are coming back with the ring and the whole the whole nine yards. So October 9th, mark your calendars at 6:05. It goes down live. Okay, um, that's my cheap plug. <laughs> Professional wrestling has been a big thing with you, as yes. as it has with me. We sat here. You know, for about a half an hour before we came on on the air here tonight, and just c kind of talked about our fandom a little bit about wrestling. Uh, Joe Johnson was was here with us, who does a fantastic job in 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 the control room f for us each and every time we're here. Uh, but we were talking to him about fandoms with the movies and things yes. of that nature. Yes. Um, when did wrestling be become a thing for you? Whew. Oh man, that goes back to. 
93, I believe it was. Okay. And uh, it was right before, you know, Monday Night Raw started. Okay. Because um, I think Raw started in 94, I believe. Or was well, it? It might have been 93. Yep, it was. Yeah, it was 93. The beginning of 93. Yep, yep. Okay, so yeah, because uh, I, <laughs> I, I still remember um, what really caught my eye. The first thing that really comes to my head right now is, uh, you know, Razor Ramon being pent by the uh, one, two, three, one, two, three kid. kid. Yeah. And, uh, and, and, and The Undertaker's uh, wrestling the first main event on uh, Monday Night Raw. Uh, I forgot who he uh, pinned. But, uh, Damien. Damien. Da- yep, yep. Yep. And uh, those memories, you know, and, you know, I was a young age and um, just watching it, it caught my eye and just seeing the crowd go crazy. I'm at home like, what is this? Like, okay. Uh, <laughs> How old were you then? I was, oh, wow. Oh, I was at 93. I was seven. Okay. Yes. Yeah, seven. Yeah, prime age. Eight. Yeah. Yeah. Going on eight. Yes, okay. I was going on eight. Yep. So it, I was I was hooked at that time, and uh, <laughs> and you know after watching a few shows, you know a couple of buddies of mine that lived on the same street, um, they started watching it, you know, and um, you know we kind of start hooking up and going in the backyard and start to imitate some of the moves right there on the grass of uh, my grandmother's backyard and the way her backyard was designed. Um, you know, you got the fence that went around it. It was almost like a perfect square. Right. <laughs> so I said, we got our square circle and right there was on, on, on the back side, there was no fence, but there was a drop off like a rock wall. We used that for the apron. <laughs> 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 so, you know, we were, uh, you know, imitating our favorite, uh, performers at the time. And, uh, you know, I was a big undertaker fan. Uh, coming up because he was so mysterious, you know, you couldn't see his face. I didn't, I, I, right? <laughs> you know, and uh, you know, purple glove Undertaker. Okay. Um, you know, so I was a big fan. And version two of the Undertaker. Yeah, version two. Yeah. Yep, yep. A lot of people don't know about version one, <laughs> <laughs> but I was a fan of him. You know, pretty much all the versions of him. But uh, <clears throat> but uh, growing up, just you know, following his career and uh. And, and Razor Ramon, Scott Hall, um, the kid, you know, Sean Waltman, and uh, Sean, Sean Michaels was starting to break out yep. as a single star. It really, really started to ca- ca- catch us, you know, and um, we just started running shows in the backyard. <laughs> in the backyard. How many people did that, right? How many kids did that? Oh, every, I know everybody. I, right. I mean, if you were a, if you were a fan at that point, that's just that went hand in hand because you wanted you yes. wanted to be a wrestler. You wanted to be a superstar. Yep. And I'm always curious and you know when we talk about wrestling here on on the show, I'm you know one of the first questions I always ask is how old were you when when you got hooked on it? When did you start watching it? And who was the one guy that drew you in? I, you, you know me. Anybody who who knows me knows what a huge Undertaker fan I am. Um, for me, yes. you know, I started watching it. I started paying attention to it, and really in '84, just as Hogan, Hulk yep. Hogan, won his first world title. That was a Hulkamania boom, yeah. man. And I was I was your yeah. age when that happened, and I was hooked. I mean. <laughs> You have my attention. Yes. yes. Um, so it's it's always interesting to me when I hear like you know you're a little bit younger than I am. You you got hooked into it during you know the early '90s. So have you maintained your fandom all the way till now? Because I know with with a lot of people when for a lot of wrestling fans, especially if you were watching in the '80s, like what I grew up on, you know the Olden era, yeah. as, as it were, Hogan, Piper, Junkyard Dog, Andre, all of them, right, Macho right. Man. Um, you know, a lot of people, you know, die. They die off. They yeah, die yeah. off they because, off. you know, as the, as the WWF, which was r- really the marquee of right. the entire, you know, sport, uh, and I said sport, and, um, <laughs> yes. you, you know, they didn't have a lot of those big stars, you know. They, they, right. they, they had Bret Hart, they had Shawn Michaels. They were awesome in ring, you know, per- personalities. The Undertaker, Diesel, that, this type of thing. 
But they didn't have that huge star that Hogan was. Right, right. They didn't have that marquee guy that right. you put his name on the bill, you're going to sell out. Yeah. Not until the Attitude Era came along, right? Oh, yeah. Stone Cold Steve Austin, The Rock, uh, a Triple H. You know, you're talking about a total resurgence. Yeah. Now, with that, <laughs> the Monday Night Wars things start, start to come into play. Oh, my goodness. WWF, yeah. WCW. Did you have a preferred side? Did you flip it back and forth? How did you maintain the Monday Night War era? I was I was always loyal to WWE. Okay. WWF at yep. the time. Um, what I would what I would do is you know Monday Nitro would actually come on an hour prior, mm -hmm. so I would watch the first hour of Monday Nitro. But when that eight o'clock mark came around, <laughs> I would switch over, and I would switch. You know, I'll check out Monday Nitro when the commercials. You know, come on, and I'll check and see what's going on over there. But mainly, I was WWF all the way. Right. You know? Even when they were going through their losing streak, you know, the 83 weeks. Yeah. Uh, you know, I, I pretty much stayed on board, you know, because I was a big, big Stone Cold fan, you know. And I was a big Rock fan. <laughs> and then, you know, Undertaker, he was doing this transition, you know, 99 into the ministry. Yeah. Undertaker, which was one of my favorite Probably my second favorite. Uh, is it, Ralph? <laughs> yep, my second favorite incarnation of The Undertaker is Ministry Undertaker. See, that, <laughs> that surprises me, Q, because he was such a dark version of his character, almost sa sa satanic yeah, a, a, yeah. a little bit. So with you <laughs> being so involved with church and, and things of that nature, that kind of, isn't that kind of ironic, yeah. right? It is. <laughs> <laughs> what was it? A, what was it about that version of him that was was so captivating for you? Uh, for me, it was it was the look. Okay. It was the look, and it was uh, a different look. The 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 presentation of it, you know, I thought it was pretty pretty cool. With uh, you know, I love the Undertaker in the faction, mm -hmm. but I I don't ever want to see him in a faction right. other than you know the ministry and, and the, the guys they put around him. Um, I thought were pretty good, you know, guys that weren't going anywhere. Right. You know, you know, Viscera and uh, Midian and, and oh, I was a big fan of the Brood. Okay. I was a big fan of the Brood. Um, Gangrel, I was a huge fan of Gangrel until he spoke. <laughs> <laughs> I was a huge fan of Gangrel and that's actually when his career started going down right. when he spoke, you know. But uh, that faction was a uh, very big on, you know, on me, and uh, I was I would actually imitate him a lot uh, <laughs> during that time. It just really it's such a contrast <laughs> to like what the foundation of your being right, is, right? You know, so that's you know you talk about the ministry and like Edge broke out from yeah. that, and a, a Christian broke out, the APA broke out from yep, that. Yep. Um, so I was very much very, very s similar. I would watch that first hour of Nitro. Raw comes on at, at 9 o'clock. So nine I would sw yeah. switch over to Raw, watch all of that, and then I would pick up the Nitro re replay an hour oh. after <laughs> Raw w w you know, went off the air. So um, I, I kept in touch. I was, you know, like you, very much very loyal to WWE. I still am. I'm, I mean, I've, I've supported Vince McMahon and that entire brand over right. half my life, you know, <laughs> now, I don't know, I, I would shudder to, to think how many, how much money I've spent on that company, yeah. you know, <laughs> with the pay-per-views, the merchandise, the, the action figures, all of the whole nine yards. Right, you know right, I mean? right. Um, so, WCW is purchased by Vince McMahon, the Monday Night Wars are, are done, WWE has won, um, and it would be over 20 years bef until we get something. I mean, TNA, I, I guess, for all intents and purposes, yeah. they had a respectable footprint in the business as yeah. a distant n number two, which I, I I appreciated, but I never looked at them as right, yeah. major competition. No. Even when they had Hogan, the, you know, they signed Hogan and Bischoff, they signed Flair, Foley, all the big ex- WWF and, yeah. and WCW stars. Now we have all elite wrestling. Yes. Where are you at with with, with <laughs> AEW? Uh, you know what? 
I, for a long time, I just couldn't get behind it. Mm -hmm. You know, uh, you know, I, I, just like you, I was uh, very loyal to WWE, and uh, you know. But uh, one thing about all elite wrestling, I, I feel that I don't want to say competition. I don't like saying competition in this aspect, but uh, I would say an alternative. There you go. Good word. This is a good alternative to something. If you don't like what's going on on WWE. You know, you can watch AEW, right. and uh, and and to be honest, there's a lot of good wrestling, you know, going on, even all over. You know, you got Ring of Honor, and uh, it, it might it might not be big, but you got Ring of, Ring of Honor, New Japan, yeah. uh, pro wrestling, Impact, uh, Impact, yeah, yeah. And they're still still kicking. Yep. Uh, but you know, I've always been big on WWE, but recently, you know, AEW have been catching my eye with uh, some of the talent that I used to enjoy in WWE. <laughs> sure. <laughs> you know, because I was a fan of Rusev. Mm -hmm. I, was a, I was a Rusev fan. And uh, I, like, I like what he's doing in, uh, as Miro in AEW. And, uh, and then we got the Malachi Black uh, introduction, which to me was probably one of the best uh, surprises that we've seen in so long. Because I believe some... I believe the internet kind of ruined surprises in wrestling. <laughs> the internet has ruined pro professional wrestling, in my yes. opinion. But yes. that's, a, that's a story for another day. But when Aleister Black, Malachi Black, when he showed up, it was a surprise. And nobody, people in the company didn't even know. Right. So uh, I thought it was an awesome moment. We haven't had a moment like that uh, since, I don't know, the Radicals showed up on, uh, on Raw. The, on, on, yeah. on Raw. <laughs> that's I mean, I would have to sit here for, for a couple <laughs> minutes and, and think about it, but I got to believe that on that level, that would probably be the last time something that, that big happened. Um, so, Q, man, I could sit here for hours on end to, you know, just kind of sit here and pick your brain, especially with, with, with the wrestling aspect. Right, but, right. Uh, um, as we wrap up the, this episode, I want to take a moment here and thank you for, for coming on. Thank you for having and me. And I certainly appreciate everybody tuning in here tonight. And uh, the one thing that we, we could take away from, from, from this episode here, here tonight is you never know when that door of opportunity is going to, to be presented to you. And um, if you have an opportunity <laughs> To, to seize that moment, and it, if it keeps pr presenting itself to you, there's probably a reason for it. So, so, so keep that in, in the back of your mind. I, I appreciate you, sir, and I appreciate ev everyone for, for tuning in and for the fine staff here at ONTV. We will be back here on s September the 10th at 6 p.m. for our next very exciting installment of Klaus for the Heart Live on ONTV. So with that, we will see you next time.